Andy Katz here for March Madness and NCAA.com with a look at my seven biggest questions as practice starts across the country here in mid-October. Let's start at number seven. Top three teams in my Power 36, top three seeds uh, in our first bracket in the preseason, Gonzaga, Baylor, and Villanova. All have experienced players. But they lost all, at least a little bit of a key player from last season. How they handle the beginning of this time period. Do they deal with any adversity? Do they even need to do much coaching or is it just becoming even more familiar? How these three teams come out of this early practice, I think will be a big determining factor as to whether or not they can hold those spots as we start the season November 25th. Uh, Hopefully none of them have any disruptions related to any positive COVID tests or even any contact tracing, which could sideline any of these teams, which we saw happen already with Purdue, which uh, means the Boilermakers are going to have to start practice a week later, not because of a positive test, but because of a contact tracing issue. So how these top three teams navigate the beginning of practice may have a lot to do with how they will do at the beginning of the non-conference portion of the season starting Thanksgiving week. At number six, to me, it's the Pac-12. Pac-12 originally was not going to play before January. There were some schools like UCLA, which due to state health regulations, has not even been allowed to be on campus. Now that has changed. So they got a late start. Some schools were able to practice this summer, able to practice at the beginning of the school year. Not full, but at least to be on the court together. Pac-12 schools are sort of reintroducing themselves only within the last couple of weeks. Does that matter? Do they have enough time to get ready for the beginning of the season? I think they will, but will there be any lag because they were not able to practice as much prior to here in this time in October? At number five, look, there's a number of high-profile freshmen in this class, but there's three that I have my eye on and how they handle the beginning of the season, which will be like no other. Cade Cunningham from Oklahoma State, Josh Christopher from Arizona State, and Greg Brown from Texas. All three of these players could have chosen the G League alternative of being on a developmental team, which we don't even know when that's going to start. They chose to come to college. They're all going to have a major impact. All could be All-Americans, could compete, who knows, for a player of the year in their conference. But how they handle the beginning of practice, how they assert themselves, how they create their own identity on these respective teams, uh, and all three of these teams should have really good seasons, notably Arizona State, which could be a Final Four contender, and Texas, a potential Big 12 title contender. At number four, two of the Blue Bloods. Who will be their stars at Kentucky and Duke? At Kentucky, it easily could be B.J. Boston, their heralded, heralded freshman, but we don't know that yet. At Duke, could it be a freshman, or could it be Matthew Hurt? Through social media already, Duke is pushing Matthew Hurt as the potential star of this Duke Blue Devil team, which would be more of a returnee, obviously, than a freshman. But I think we're waiting to find out in practice who emerges as that go-to player on those two respective Blue Bloods, which, of course, will be in contention deep into the season. At number two and three, injury recoveries here. At number three, Jordan Bohannon from Iowa coming back from his second hip surgery last winter. I spoke with him. He says he's feeling better than ever, making shots, uh, but we got to see it. And if he can do that for this Iowa team, which brings back the player of the year in Luca Garza, didn't want, win all of them, but certainly was one of the players of the year with OB Toppin of Dayton. Joe Wieskamp is back, Joe Toussaint, uh, Connor McCaffrey. If Bohannon can make shots for Iowa and is healthy, That's a game changer for the Hawkeyes. At number two, Marcus Zagorowski from Creighton. More than likely will be the Big East preseason player of the year. Hurt his knee in March. uh, Was not even going to play in the rest of the Big East tournament. Didn't play in that half against St. John's before everything was canceled. Was not going to be able to play in the NCAA tournament. So, once again, he told me he's healthy. If he is and plays well here early, That's a major impact for a Blue Jay team that is going to be right there with Villanova to win the Big East and will be 
a top 20 team throughout the course of the season. So practice early for Zagorowski is huge. And to me, the number one question as practice starts really involves a team that could be a deep run team. But there are a couple of questions on this team. And that's Michigan State. Number one question, who's the point guard? Who replaces Cassius Winston? Is it Foster Lawyer? Is it Jack Hoiberg? Is it Rocket Watts sliding over as a wing to the point? Number two, Joshua Langford, who's been hurt uh, really almost the last year and a half. He is supposed to be back playing. He's had these foot injuries that have sidelined him. He was a big-time scorer for the Spartans before he got hurt. If he comes back, can play 20 minutes a game and produce, that is a potential game-changer for the Spartans. And then Joey Hauser, like his brother Sam Hauser, sat out last season after transferring from Marquette. Sam's going to have a, uh, you know, be a big time scorer for Virginia after sitting out. That's the anticipation. But for Joey Hauser, as he is eligible for Michigan State, now if he's making shots, you've got Hauser and Lankford, two players that they didn't have last season during their stretch run, obviously. You add those two scores. And that certainly could make up for the scoring loss of Cassius Winston and Xavier Tillman. So big questions for Michigan State, all solvable, and we'll know early in practice how they're doing.